When Colorado voted to legalize marijuana, probably few people's very first thoughts were of business opportunities. But today, state officials reported they took in about $2 million in recreational pot taxes in January, just the first month of sales. Some say it's a billion-dollar industry, so you can bet people right across the U.S. are turning on and tuning in. As Radio Canada's Joyce Napier discovered, there are already surprising spin-offs from the Colorado experiment. Welcome to Colorado, uh, home of legal marijuana. Yes. Saturday morning in Denver, 11 a.m., and already it's party time. I got it. These bus passengers are visitors from all over the United States here for a perfectly legal Rocky Mountain high. I have the absolute best job in the world, hands down. Matt Brown, a true cannabis maven, is the tour guide today. Since marijuana was legalized here on New Year's Day, his agency has done nothing but pot tourism. Business is smoking. So, you having a good time? Oh, I'm having a great time, absolutely. <laughs> Maurizio and Kim are from El Paso, Texas. This is a unique American moment, and they came to savor it. We're going to go to a grow tour, going to look at some plants, going to see how they grow them, uh, look at different kinds of weeds. And last night we got to experience the THC massage oil. It was wonderful. <laughs> Just a few months ago, a casual chic gathering like this one would have been underground. Now, though, this crowd at the Space Gallery is emerging into the legal sunshine along with the rest of Colorado's cannabis industry. With here, I mean, if they do it smart, you can make money out of it. You know, get the cartels out of the way, go ahead and bring in tax government, and then they'll invest it within themselves. Yesterday's pushers and dealers are today's entrepreneurs. Sellers, growers, tourists, promoters, all of them happily celebrating the end of a prohibition just as another generation did 80 years ago. Denver treats pot like cigarettes. You can't smoke either one in a public place, so a rented bus provides a private smoking salon for this evening's party goers. There's really nothing else that can equate to what we've done with cannabis by bringing it from the black market into a legitimate industry. Tony Fox is a cannabis veteran. For years she grew and sold medical marijuana. Now she's catering to a vastly larger clientele. It's a billion dollar industry in its infancy. So it is going to be the next big business and it's definitely the next, it's, it's a green rush. This is called the Colorado Experiment and the whole country is watching. There are billions of dollars at stake and massive new taxes for governments. And if it works here, as many as eight states may hold votes to legalize marijuana in the next two years. Love's Oven has joined the green rush. It too was a medical marijuana dispensary until January. Now, business is not just up, it's exploded by a thousand percent. Hope, who is Love's Oven's master creator, is working flat out, but she still can't keep up with demand for cannabis lace treats. And we also do just chocolate dipped graham crackers, um, cookies, uh, spicy ginger cookies. Most of her baked goods are created with something called canna butter. That's right cannabis butter, green and oily and reeking of a smell that once attracted law enforcement. Our best-selling cookie. Is that right? Mm -hmm. You know, when people take a bite and they're like, oh, this tastes just like, you know, my grandma's cookie, and they realize it's not quite their grandma's cookie, but it'll make you happy for a long time afterwards. Yeah. In an era when public smoking of any kind is not just against the law but out of fashion, the so-called pot edibles are the hot commodity. Everybody wants them. We're North America's first legal marijuana tourism company. Um, this is our cooking class at one of the stops on our weekend tour here in Denver, Colorado. So you just reduce the balsamic. Cannabis cooks turn out a, a mixed bag of treats. Okay. 
cakes, cookies, jujus. There are candies and sodas, manna for retailers and clients alike. I sell out every day I'm open and I'm doing at least 20 times my volume on a daily basis. So average daily sales are 25,000 currently. By summer, there'll be 50,000. By fall, we're hoping to do $100,000 per day. How's it going? It may now be legal, but this new industry is far more regulated than alcohol. You must be 21 to buy any sort of cannabis. Every gram is legally accounted for. Colorado residents can only purchase one ounce at a time. Visitors can't buy more than a quarter ounce. All products are imprinted with barcodes and electronically traceable. It's one of the biggest stories we'll deal with in 2014, certainly. And of course, like any big issue, it's become a specialty beat for reporters. We've talked about wine criticism and music criticism for decades, and now we're talking about legitimate professional cannabis criticism. The biggest daily in Colorado, the Denver Post, now has a website dedicated entirely to cannabis with its own editor-in-chief. Baca and his colleagues are clearly a new breed of journalists in a new world. It's kind of ubiquitous. It's everywhere. It's the smell of a bar or it's the smell of the park at lunchtime. Um, that smell is kind of ever-present in a weird way because legalization has changed everything. It really is like a gold rush here. Denver now has more cannabis shops than Starbucks outlets. And it's just the beginning. So what did you guys buy? Oh, we ended up getting a drink. They just spent $300 on various products. Dark chocolate, spicy orange candy bar. A quarter of that money will find its way into government treasuries. Colorado is eyeing all that new state income as much as $150 million just this year. But there are imponderables. How, for example, to test for driving under the influence of marijuana? What level, if any, is tolerable? But all of this plan and because federal law still prohibits pot, it's very challenging as an industry that uh, financial institutions won't take our money. <laughs> Washington has said it will not prosecute in states where pot is legal. Uh, I picked up some of those spikes. But banks are nevertheless nervous and don't like accepting drug profits, even perfectly legal ones. So, in a twist that makes no one happy, a lot of dispensaries here store massive amounts of cash in safes, just like they did in the illegal old days. And lots of cash always invites trouble. Mostly, though, this experiment is proceeding well. There's been no reported increase in criminal activity or in traffic accidents. Marijuanaization, if you want to call it that, is happening discreetly, in private, and, well, happily. Uh, are you stoned right now? Very much stoned, yes. <laughs> Absolutely. There is no doubt about that. <laughs> Joyce Napier, CBC News, Denver, Colorado. As Joyce mentioned, police in Colorado are in a quandary about how to test drivers for marijuana impairment. There's no device like a breathalyzer to measure pot impairment, and a person can have a positive blood test for marijuana days after smoking. Right now, there are no clear statistics in Colorado to measure whether driving while stoned has risen since pot was legalized in January. In the past, those suspected of driving while high were treated as DUIs, with no differentiation between alcohol and pot. But clearly authorities are concerned. Colorado's Transportation Department launched an ad campaign today called Drive High, Get a DUI.